This is Mac OS Ken. Shuffling up the supply chain, OS updates abound, and a killer trailer from Apple TV Plus. It is Friday, the 19th of May, 2023. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Use code MacOSCAN50 at factormeals.com slash MacOSCAN50 for 50% off your first box. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon, Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. China may not be the only part of Apple's supply chain seeing diversification. TF International analyst Ming-Chi Kuo posted a post to Medium Thursday indicating something of a shakeup in iPhone production. According to the analyst, it looks like China's Luxshare will handle new product introduction, or NPI, for next year's top-of-the-line iPhone. NPI tasks the lead with guiding a product from the design phase all the way through mass production. If Luxshare does end up with that task, it'll be the first time that Foxconn has not handled the highest-end iPhone from soup to nuts. So, Apple is fighting China with China? Not according to Ming-Chi Kuo. Quoting part of his post, Apple is expected to help Luxshare set up production lines in India, and Luxshare will benefit from the growth of the Indian market and supply chain in the coming years. While some doubt Luxshare's ability to find a passage to India, the analyst says his latest research suggests that Apple will negotiate with the Indian government to help Luxshare set up production lines in India with solutions such as joint ventures. While the change does sound big, it's actually been gradual. The Medium Post says Apple transferred some iPhone 14 Pro Max production to Luxshare after the COVID troubles at Foxconn's iPhone City plant late last year. That has gone better than expected, according to the analyst. So the company has been awarded the iPhone 16 Pro Max Assembly NPI for 2024. Not that Foxconn is out entirely. The TF International analyst says the 16 line will see the Pro Max come from Luxshare, the 16 Pro and 16 from Foxconn, and the 16 Plus from Pegatron. Personally, I'm hoping we're back to a 16 Mini at that point. But there is plenty of time between now and then for things to change and for people to forget everything being said this early. If you think moving Pro Max production from Foxconn to Luxshare is a big deal, now hear this. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company is reportedly thinking of moving some production from Taiwan to Japan. Apple Insider says they're not the only chip maker considering such a move, but seems kind of like a big deal for TSMC since the T stands for Taiwan. The problem is the local instability caused by ratcheting tensions between China and the U.S. The solution? Get out the way. According to Apple Insider, seven chip makers have met with the Japanese Prime Minister to discuss moving some portion of their operations to Japan. The announcement comes ahead of a G7 summit in Japan, where economic stability is expected to be a core topic. Due to the mounting geopolitical tension, the piece says TSMC could see investors pulling out if it does not move at least a portion of manufacturing out of Taiwan, don't look now, but it's already seen that. Earlier this week, 9 to 5 Mac ran a piece that said Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway had sold all of its shares in TSMC. According to the report, Buffett said that while he remained a great admirer of the company, tensions between China and Taiwan were too great 
to make it a safe investment. We knew that this week would bring updates to Apple's many operating systems, and Thursday brought the lot. Report after report from Mac Rumors will fill us in, starting with the releases of iOS and iPadOS 16.5. Features and fixes for the two. Among them, there's a dedicated sports tab in the Apple News app. There are My Sports Score and Schedule cards in Apple News to dig deeper on specific games or matches. Spotlight, podcasts and CarPlay, and Screen Time all had issues addressed. And of course, the way we knew updates were coming this week, Apple added a new Pride wallpaper for the lock screen. The update for macOS Ventura 13.4 has fewer features and more fixes than its iPhone and iPad counterparts. Apple News for Mac gets a sidebar sports feed instead of a front and center tab. The My Sports Score and Schedule cards make their way to News for Mac. And most of the rest appears to be bug fixes, including addressing a problem with auto unlock with Apple Watch, a Bluetooth keyboard fix, a voiceover issue with navigating to landmarks on web pages, and a problem with screen time. Now, while most, if not all, of Apple's OS updates would be expected to have a security component, This week's updates for iPhone, iPad, and Mac are particularly important. Yet another piece from Mac Rumors says they address three actively exploited vulnerabilities. All tied to WebKit, the report says two of these issues were addressed in the prior iOS 16.4.1 and macOS 13.3.1 rapid security response updates and are not an issue if you updated, but a third vulnerability is still active until you install the latest updates. Of course, there are other security fixes for these operating systems and others. You can check them all out on Apple's security update page. What can we say about watchOS 9.5? Almost nothing, really. While there are many security fixes for the Cupertino company's chronometer, the only newness mentioned by Mac Rumors is the Pride Celebration watch face announced last week to go along with Apple's 2023 Pride Band. It's a rare occasion when a tvOS update brings a feature about which we know, and yet tvOS 16.5 did just that. With the update, Mac Rumor says Apple brought in a multi-view sports feature that will allow Apple TV users to stream up to four sports games simultaneously with a four-quadrant screen layout. Well, how am I supposed to fall asleep to that? And swinging us back to the boring, Apple released HomePod software 16.5 on Thursday. It's not the device that's boring, nor the things you can hear through it. But the release notes? Total snooze fest. According to Apple's release notes, according to Mac Rumors, the update adds stability and performance improvements to the HomePod. More news in a moment, but first a word from Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and sponsor of today's show. Factor brings some of the best parts of dining out or calling for takeout to you. The ability to enjoy food you might not know how to make, the fun of dining without the prep and the cleanup. Here's what's great though not only is Factor cheaper than takeout, meals are ready faster than restaurant delivery. Just 10 minutes in the oven or 2 minutes in the microwave. With over 30 chef-prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there is always something new to try, and even more in-store. Factor keeps an assortment of over 40 add-ons you can add on, like breakfast items, shakes, smoothies, and more. The smoothies were very popular around these parts, as were all of the meals we've had so far. Head to factormeals.com slash macOSCan50 and use code macOSCan50 to get 50%
off your first box. That's code macOS Ken five zero at factormeals.com slash macOS Ken five zero to get fifty percent off your first box. Find out what's made Factor America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Get fifty percent off your first box with code macOS Ken fifty at factormeals.com slash Mac OS Ken 50. ChatGPT has an official iPhone app, according to a piece from Engadget. The site says OpenAI has launched a free ChatGPT app for iOS. It is the first official smartphone app for the viral language model, joining a crowded field of third party mobile AI software vying for your attention. Right now, that is only for people here in the States. Expansion to additional countries is expected in the coming weeks. What's funny is, while Apple will give ChatGPT a home in the App Store, it would apparently rather its people not get chatty with it. A piece from the Wall Street Journal says the Cupertino company has restricted the use of ChatGPT and other external artificial intelligence tools for some employees. That is according to a document reviewed by the journal. Based on that document review, the report says Apple is concerned workers who use these types of programs could release confidential information. But, you know, it's fine for you. And then there were four. Cult of Mac says Georgia has become the fourth state in the union to support putting driver's licenses and state-issued IDs in Apple Wallet. The Peach State joins Arizona, Colorado, and Maryland in making the move. Or will at some point. While the Georgia Department of Driver Services said Thursday, now you can add your Georgia driver's license or state ID to Apple Wallet on iPhone and Apple Watch, you actually couldn't on Thursday. Cult of Mac tests found that the state is not currently an option on Apple devices, according to the site, or it wasn't on Thursday when they tried it. Time to toss your physical ID... Well, not if you actually want to be able to use your ID. According to the cult, the Department of Driver Services says on its website that the digital version serves as a companion to your physical plastic driver's license identification card. It is not yet a replacement of the physical card, and you must continue to carry your physical driver license identification card with you. Most importantly, the agency warns, Law enforcement does not accept Georgia digital ID on iPhone and Apple Watch. Put two more pins in the Apple Pay map. 9to5Mac says Apple's contactless payment solution has gone live in Panama and Honduras. The two are part of a Central American expansion that began earlier this month when support went live in Guatemala and El Salvador. One of Apple's sophomore shows is saying so long. Apple Insider says Apple TV Plus has announced a premiere date for the third and final season of the dark comedy Physical. Announcing the swan song, the show's star and executive producer Rose Byrne and the show's creator Annie Weissman said... We are so grateful to Apple, Tomorrow Studios, and all our creative collaborators for the chance to bring the show's lead character, Sheila, to life in all her gritty glory. With this final season, Sheila's three-act saga of rebellion, recovery, and redemption comes to a satisfying conclusion that she and her fans so richly deserve. We feel so proud to share this last chapter with everyone. The show's end begins on the 2nd of August. Seasons 1 and 2 of Physical are available to stream now on Apple TV+. And finally today, the world got its first good look Thursday at Apple's most ambitious film so far. 
Apple Insider says Apple TV Plus has released a trailer for the Martin Scorsese film Killers of the Flower Moon. Now, here's the thing I don't understand. While the film premieres at the Cannes Film Festival tomorrow, Saturday, the 20th of May, it's going to be another four and a half months before most of us have a chance to see it. As had been announced before, the report says the film will have a limited release on Friday, the 6th of October, followed by a wider release on Friday, the 20th of October, before it becomes available globally on Apple TV+. Packing enough stars to light the night sky, Killers of the Flower Moon has a killer cast. It includes Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro, Lily Gladstone, Jesse Plemons, Brendan Fraser, and John Lithgow. If you want a glimpse what will likely be Apple's next shot at an Oscar, the trailer for Killers of the Flower Moon is available now on YouTube. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready to eat meal kit. Use code Mac OS Ken50 at factormeals.com slash Mac OS Ken50 for 50% off your first box. This show is also supported by people like you. Patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716 716- Seven eight zero four zero eight zero. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.